Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to review expanding logarithms and condensing logarithms. So <clears throat> if I were you, I would suggest writing down these first four problems, pausing the video and trying them, and then playing it when you're ready to see if you did them correctly. Before we start expanding logs, let's review our properties that we use. First of all, if we have the log base B of M times N, we can write those as two separate logs as the log base B of M plus the log base B of N. So that was our product property. And when we have our product, we add the logs. <clears throat> the next one, when we're taking the log base B of M divided by N, we take the log base B of M minus the log base B of N. So that was our quotient property. And when we're taking the quotient, we subtract what's inside the logs. <clears throat> All right, and finally, log base B of M to the power of N, what we do is we wrap that N around in the front and multiply N times the log base B of M. That's our product property. Oh gosh, power property, sorry. And with our power property, we multiply. <clears throat> okay, let's try a few. Number one. I have the natural log of the product two times x squared times y cubed. So I'm going to have the same number of logs as the coefficients and variables that I have. As you see, I have three. I have two, x squared, and y cubed. So my first step would be to write that as three different logs. And since they're all being multiplied, I will add the logs. The natural log of two plus the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of y cubed. Now, to be completely expanded, we need to bring these powers out front. So I'm going to start with the natural log of two, plus, I'm gonna wrap that two around in front, two times the natural log of x, plus wrapping the three around, three times the natural log of y. And this would be completely expanded. All right, number two, I have the log base four of x times the square root of y. When we have a root, we have to remember that those can be written as fractional exponents. So this could also be written as the log base four of x times y to the one half. So because we have x times y, we are going to use the product property. We're gonna write that as the log base four of x plus the log base four of y to the one half. Because one half is a power, we need to bring that in front of the log. So I still have the log base four of x, and then I'm going to have plus one half the log base four of y. All right, number three. The log base three of x divided by y cubed times z to the fourth. So I have x y cubed and z to the fourth. So I'm gonna have three logs in my answer, all base three. So first I have the log base three of x. Now because y cubed and z to the fourth are both in the denominator of this fraction, x is being divided by both of those. So both of those will have a minus. So I'm gonna have minus the log base three of y cubed minus the log base three of z to the fourth. And finally, I'm going to bring my powers in front of their logs. So I have the log base three of x minus three times the log base three of y minus four times the log base three of z. <clears throat> and our last one, I have the common log of three times a to the fourth divided by b. So I have three and then I have a to the fourth and then I have b. So I'm gonna have three logs. I'm gonna write the log of three because a to the fourth is in top with that. At, that will be addition plus the log of a to the fourth and then minus the log of b. And I'm gonna bring that power of four in front of its log. And there is my final answer, the log of three plus four times the log of a minus the log of b. 
So that is expanding. We can also condense logs, which is what we do when we're solving log equations. So this is a good, good skill to have. Um, so what we do is we condense each expression so that it's written with just one single log. So we're reversing what we did up here. So the last thing we did up here was bring the powers in front. So that would be the first thing we do, put them back up top if we're condensing, if we have anything in front of the logs. So in number one, I have the log base 2 of x plus the log base 2 of x minus 5. This is addition. So I'm going to take the product of what is in the logs in one single log. So I'm going to have the log base 2 of x times x minus 5. Distributing that, I will have the log base 2 of x squared minus 5x. And that has to be in parentheses. If you don't have parentheses around that, the minus 5x would not be part of the log. Number two, three times the log of y minus two times the log of z. So these have those coefficients in front that we need to bring up as exponents. Once we've done that, we take a look at what's happening. We're subtracting, so this is going to be the quotient property. And so I'm going to write the log. And remember, we only write log once with these properties of y cubed over z squared. And that's it for that one. <clears throat> All right, number three. The natural log of six plus the natural log of three minus the natural log of nine. And I don't know why I did or didn't put parentheses around these. Those, you don't really need them. If I start and take a look at these, because these are being added, those will be multiplied, 6 times 3. And then because the 9, the natural log of 9 is being subtracted, that will be divided. So I could write this as the natural log of 6 times 3, and then that's divided by 9. And I can do that math in my head. The natural log of 6 times 3, that's 18, divided by 9 is 2. So that's the natural log of 2. All right, last one. Log base 3 of x plus 6 plus the log base 3 of x minus 4. Since I'm adding, I'm going to use my product property and write this as the log base 3 of x plus 6 times x minus 4. So I'm going to have to distribute. <clears throat> and I'm going to end up with the log base 3 of x squared minus 4x plus 6x minus 24 and combine your like terms. So we have the log base 3 of x squared plus 2x minus 24. Make sure that's all in parentheses.